So you can think of this like if a function is surjective, let me think. So here, you can actually extend this a little bit. So let's say we've got f from a to b, then any inverse um, would be g from b to a, right? And let's see. So surjective implies there exists a g such that g composed with f is the identity on a. So there's a left inverse if it's surjective, right? So and you can you can kind of keep this in mind because it's if it's surjective, then this function f hits everything in b, right? Then you have a a starting place where for where to send those things from b, right? Yeah. Um, but if it's injective, then that means there exists a g such that f composed with g is the identity on b. So it has a right inverse. And then I guess like you can see kind of immediately, these are if and only if statements actually, that if it's surjective, the left inverse is going to be injective. And if it's injective, then the right inverse is going to be surjective. I'm like 90% sure I got these sides right, but there's like a sided thing here, right? But then if it's bijective, then there's a, a two-sided inverse, right? Yeah. And so you can kind of see that there's sometimes like only one side to an inverse, right? I mean, you can even see that with matrices. Like you could construct pretty easily um, some sort of setup like this. Yeah, to get to get that, right? Yeah, because it's not square, yeah. And so that, that kind of thing exists.